Hello, this is Dr. Do. Again, this video is a done, it really is uh, it's not from any series. I used to record it, just voice record the, the book of IE Night by Virgil. But recently, the um, I just figured to use a video instead of the uh, voice recorder from previously. Um, so I'm going to continue um, from where I recorded it before and continue to read it. And probably this, this will be temporary, just give it a try. Um, I'm going to read it. Our situation is clear for all to see, and it needs no voice of ours in council now, my noble king. The people know, they admit, they know what destiny has in store. But they flinch from speaking out. Let him allow us to speak and quick his puffed-up pride, that man whose unholy leadership and twisted ways, oh, I'll let those. He can threaten me with death. So many dealing lights among us, he snuffed out that we see our entire city plunged in grief while he, trusting that he can break and run, attacks the Trojans, terrorizing the heavens with his spears. Just add one gift to the hordes. You tell us now to give and pledge the Dardans. Just one more, my generous king. Let no one's violence overwhelm your power here, as a father to give his daughter to a man, an outstanding man, a marriage earned in full and sealed by pacts of peace that last forever. But if such terror grips our hearts and minds, let us beg a favor of our fine prince. Turners, surrender to king and country their due rights. Why keep fleeing our wrenched people into a peril. You are the root and spring of all the Latin grapes. There is no salvation in war. Peace. We all beg you, Turners, bound with the one inviolate pledge of peace. I have come first, the man you think your enemy, and what if I am? I am here to implore you now. Pity your own people, surrender your pride. You are beaten. Now retreat. Rounded so, we have seen our field of death, vast tracks we have left a wasteland. Or, if glory spurs you on, if your strength is still like oak, if the dory of a palace seems so very dear to your heart, courage, chest out, meet your enemy head on. But of course, so Turners can fetch his royal bride, our lives are cheap scattered in piles across the field, unburied and unwept. Come, prince, if you have the spine, if you have any spark of your father's warring spirit, look, your challenger calls you out to fight. Turners groans under that barrage. His fury breaks into fire, and the outrage bursts from the soldier's deep heart. Always a mighty flood of words from you, dances, one battle demands our fighting hands. Whenever the sun is called, you are forced to show your face, but there is no earthly need to fill this house. With the stalk, with the talk that flies so bravely from your mouth, safe as you are while the ramparts keep the enemy out and the trenches still do not overflow with blood, so blast it away with your bombast, that's your style. Brand me for cowardice, dressings. Once your arm has left as many piles of slaughtered children, decked as many fields with brilliant trophies, now we are free to see what courage and quicken, quickness can achieve. No long hunt for the foe, as you may have noticed. They camp around our walls, so on every side. Come, shall we march against them? You hand back, why? Will your war last always lie in your windy words and your craven racing feet? Beaten, am I? Why could rightly call me beaten? You, you swine, you brothers, to see the table Christ with Trojan blood, and Evander's house um, uprooted, raised to the earth, and all his Arcadian fighters stripped of arms? That's hardly the man that Pandarus and Bytius 
met when those who joined confronted me and the thousand men whom I, in a single day, set down to hell in all my triumph, trapped as I was inside the enemy's rugged walls. So there is no salvation in war, you say. Go sing that song, you fool, for the children chief. Your own prospects too keep on striking your huge panic in all our hearts, praising to high heaven, the strength of a people beaten twice. Disdaining the forces of Latinus, now I suppose that Myramidon captains cringe before the Phrygian armies, now Diomedes, now Larisan, Achilles, and Ophidus' rapids rush back from the Adriatic's waves. But here is Dresses, fleeing terror at my rebukes, a scoundrel, shabby dodge just to haunt his charges hurled against me. You, you'll never lose your life, such as it is, not by my right hand. Fear not, just let it rest, beating inside that coward chest of yours. But now, father, I come back to you and your resolves. If you no longer harbor any hope. For our enemies, if we are so alone and at one repulse, our forces are totally overwhelmed. Good fortunes lost forever. Let us reach out our helpless arms and plead for peace. Oh, if only we had a shred of our old courage left! I read that man, the luckiest one among us, first in the work of war, first in strength of heart, whose. Burning the sight of our surrender, falls, dying, and bites the dust for one last time. But if we have troops and provisions still intact, and the towns and the men of Italy still support our side, if the Trojans have also paid the bloody price for glory, they have their burials too. The same storm struck us both. Then why this shameful collapse before it all begins? Why tremble so before the trumpet blares? Many things, the ruins of the days and the shifting works of fickle time, have turned from bad to good. Many men has too faced the fortune cheated, only to come back and set them up on solid ground once more. Diomedes, true, and his city, Arpi, will offer us no relief, but Mesopus will, I trust. Ptolemy's will, that soldier of fortune, and all the captains sent by so many lands, and no small glory waits for the man picked out from Lachine and the Laurentine fields, and the Camellia too, our ally sprang from Walshia's stock, heading her horsemen, squadrons, gleaning bronze. I'm going to stop here and continue next time. Thank you for watching.